Hello, I'm Sevin Mikhailova. And I'm Claude Salhani, and this is This Week in Focus. We are joined today by Doug Sigurdsson, the re- representative of the UNHCR, the High Commission for Refugees. Unless you've been living in a cave this last week, you've certainly heard about the problem with refugees that the world is facing. Uh, more specifically, the horrendous pictures that appeared on almost every newspaper, every internet site, every television of the uh, young Syrian boy who uh, drowned trying to get uh, into Greece. Um, this has really brought the, the, the issue of refugees to, 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 to light. There's been horrendous numbers uh, so far. It must have been a very hard year for you, I presume. Very busy year for you. And if we can see some hope in this darkness, it's maybe the fact that this boy's life may be not, maybe he did not die in vain, that maybe it served some purpose to, to bring the, atten- the world's attention to this tragedy. I would like to start off by showing this picture. So I have to warn the, the audience that it's, it's, it's a very hard picture to look at. So it's, if you have sensitive children, you might want to turn away for 30 seconds. Mr. Sigurdsson, what, how can we solve this refugee problem? Is, is it solvable? This is the one million dollar question, and uh, it is uh, a question that I think is on everybody's mind these days after having seen this uh, picture that you have just shown that I think has touched the whole world and has um, been a wake-up call for very many to realize that uh, something needs to be done. Uh, The fact is that this tragic picture is just one of very many tragic pictures that uh, we have seen this week, last week, last month, uh, last year. Uh, The reason why we see this picture is the desperate situation of the many refugees and displaced people uh, all over the world, and specifically uh, now in, um, in uh, related to the crisis in Syria. This conflict has been in Syria has been going on for four years now, since 2011. Uh, we have also uh, pr- um, the crisis in the neighboring Iraq, and we have a lot of new uh, emergencies. We have Ukraine, we have Yemen, and we have all the forgotten crises uh, that has been going on for decades. We have Afghanistan, we have Somalia, we have all of this. And now all these things come together and what we see is uh, happening in in, in Greece and in Italy and this country is just the tip of the iceberg. This year alone, more than 3,000 people have lost their life in trying to reach uh, safety. Yes. They are fleeing war, and the solution to the problem is to find peaceful solutions so that these people can go back to their homes, reestablish their lives, and continue with uh, a normal life like every human being would like to have. In today's world. According to figures from your agency, mm-hmm. UNHCR, the UN High Commission for Refugees, this year alone, mm-hmm. um, 366,500 mm-hmm. have arrived by sea in Europe. Yep. I think this is a conservative number because we're not counting those that never made it, those that made it but we yeah. weren't counted, mm-hmm. those that went over land. Mm-hmm. Um, does not include, for example, the Macedonia route yeah. uh, through Turkey. Um, the number of dead, you said 3,000, it mm. yes, it's very close, and, but I think, again, that's a very conservative number. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you have, have, having been in this, in this job that you, mm. that you are for uh, quite a while, mm. do you see light at the end of the tunnel? Do you, I mean, it's, 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 it's an ongoing uh, problem that's... Mm. 
Of course, when we see pictures like we have seen and we talk about numbers, they become overwhelming yes. and it's, uh, it's easy to, to, um, to lose the focus and get lost in numbers. And, and, uh, but what we are talking about is human beings who are fleeing uh, war, like has happened in... Or, or economic uh, That is another issue, but yeah. this, what we see today in right. Europe, yeah. is mainly a refugee yes. crisis. Mm -hmm. It's a refugee crisis. People have been living uh, um, in camps, in neighboring countries, in Syria, mm -hmm. uh, around Syria, in Turkey. Turkey has, is hosting two million people. Lebanon is Still hosting a million That's more, more, than that. Yeah. more than that, and, and, and Jordan, plus Iraq, the displaced population there and all these things. Uh, these people, they have lived in camps, lived under difficult uh, circumstances. Everybody has been trying to help, but over time they have exhausted their resources and they have exhausted their possibility of having a life in this temporary situation and they have moved on. And we will see this. The positive thing that we have seen is the enormous humanitarian mobilization that has taken place. But that's drying up right now. I mean, there are reports that, that the UNHCR and, and the NGOs are running out of money and out of food. And in Jordan, they decided they're not going to feed them anymore. We, this is the, the battle that we are fighting right. every day and which we have been fighting f for decades. Yes. In, we have never been able to provide everything that is needed in situation, but to cover the basics we have been able to. But what we see today... But now it looks like as if you won't even be able to do that. Well, this is what we are trying to address. But what we see now, Greece, Italy, all these other countries has been keeping their borders open. Mm. They have, despite their own problems, despite their own shortcomings, mm -hmm. despite the lack of facilities, they have kept the, the, the humanitarian uh, core at heart and allowed these people in. This is something that we are very grateful for and which uh, has to, to be given the recognition. What we have seen is that uh, a lot of uh, civilians, normal population mm -hmm. in countries, have mobilized to try to assist. Governments have had discussions yeah. according to their political agendas and the rest of it. This is the normal. But underneath that, the people have come forward and offered assistance. And that is, some countries have also taken very bold political measures yes. to try to help it. And we are asking that this is not a problem that can be solved by one country right. or what one. Definitely not. It has to be a common strategy and that is based on responsibility, the recognition of international obligation when it comes to the rights of refugees. It has to deal with trust and solidarity and burden sharing. And if these things come together, I see light in the tunnel. I agree with what you're saying, but wouldn't it make more sense, this is a little bit maybe utopic, mm -hmm. that to put pressure on the countries producing refugees to not produce refugees. In other words, more more pressure on, on the Syrian government to, to come to a conclusion of, of their civil war, which is going nowhere, which is solving nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's also a matter of question of one man staying in his job. Absolutely. It's the political dimension right. of the, yeah. the, the, the situation that creates it. And uh, we need to come to a, to, to, to a point where we start solving yes. the problems. Right. Because if we solve the problems that causes the displacement, we wouldn't have the displacement. Precisely. Because people wouldn't like to move. Sure. People would. And some of these people who are moving today have been staying for a couple of years, maybe in whatever, until they have exhausted and they have no options. If there had been a polit an options sure. for them before, they would have been able to return right. in it. So, yes, we are a humanitarian organization. We try to help when it has happened. But you are right, it is the political dimension, the political will, and the decisiveness of the international community to prevent or to solve this problem that really is, is making the difference. 
Uh, you're representing uh, the largest influential refugee organization, which has quite big resources. And you, ca you have capacities to influence on the situation and to contribute to the solution of the refugee problem. So you just mentioned about the, uh, the necessity for a common strategy. So you are a humanitarian uh, organization. So don't you think you should have some political colors to your activities as well? We are trying to use the both our experience, the, the, the first-hand information that we obtain by working closely with the beneficiaries to see the needs and all it to awareness raising mm -hmm. among the political decision makers to make sure that they have the full picture of the the the, the implications and the impact of the the this. Uh, so we are supporting regardless of where in the world any political initiative or or, or measures that could facilitate and help our work the, the first and and for most the first priority we have as an organization mm -hmm. is the wish to be able to return people to their homes in a dignified in a peaceful and a dignified and a volunteer manner mm -hmm. so we are using all our uh, capacity and resources and contacts and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, our organization has close links mm -hmm. to all the political institutions in, in Europe and elsewhere, just because it's so important to, as you said, to play uh, and, and keep the political decisions maker mm -hmm. uh, on top of the situation. And so far, have you succeeded to achieve this goal, so to return the refugees to their original places? We have s some exam good examples. We you have, have examples. We have good examples mm -hmm. on uh, on return mm -hmm. that has uh, has happened. Yeah. Uh, we, such as we we had uh, we had a large return operation in the Balkans after okay. the Dayton peace agreement. Mm -hmm. We have worked uh, for many years in in, in that region. We had uh, the uh, return to uh, Rwanda, Burundi um, mm -hmm. after the the, the conflict yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> we have been um, in Latin America. We are also been involved in in return yeah. op operations in, in uh, Southeast Asia. We have had a, a continuous uh, uh, return uh, program related to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. it. The situation in Afghanistan has been very turbulent and this project has been uh, gone. But still, there is many who has returned from, from, sure. um, from camps in both Pakistan and mm -hmm. Iran and the rest of it, unfortunately. Afghanistan is still a, a country that uh, that is producing uh, refugees, and mm -hmm. uh, there is is also uh, a lot to be done. So we we have good examples, mm -hmm. and that is uh, something to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, it is so sad to say, but your activities is enlarging and enlarging. So mm. the refugee problem is embracing um, almost all over the world, yeah. and Azerbaijan is not exception as well. So mm. as you know, for over twenty years, mm. Azerbaijan has faced mm. this problem. Uh, unfortunately, we also have the Azerbaijan has mm. one million refugees which mm. were replaced mm. uh, in their own territories, yeah. and you know, as a result of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, mm. Uh, mm. which emerged mm. uh, after Armenia's territorial mm. claims. Mm. Uh, towards Azerbaijan, so Armenia has occupied the Azerbaijani mm -hmm. territory, and also we have refugees who were uh, driven out from mm -hmm. their native, from their lands in Armenia as well. So, what is your track on this problem? What is your uh, move? Absolutely, you are right. Uh, Azerbaijan has a history um, that uh, clearly reflects the. Uh, the huge problems mm -hmm. uh, that uh, displacement of mm -hmm. large population occur. Azerbaijan is also an example of um, a country that has tried to address this, mm -hmm. uh, this situation. As you said, there are hundreds of thousands of internally displaced from the occupied territories, the refugees that came from Yana, uh, have all been um, on the top of the 
political agenda of the government of Azerbaijan from the beginning. And uh, there have been a lot of, of uh, very um, bold initiatives taken. Uh, for example, uh, the government of Azerbaijan granted uh, citizenship mm -hmm. to all the refugees that came from Armenia in 1998, mm -hmm. together with 50,000 Meshgetian Turks. Yeah. that uh, had been thrown out of Central Asia. That's that, unprecedented, isn't it? That is a, a example yeah, yeah. of how things should be done. Because these people today mm -hmm. enjoy absolutely equal rights as any other Azerbaijani citizen. And that is the core of the whole thing. When people have stayed for a, for a while, when they have integrated, when they have... Uh, is part of the society, Re refugees are resources. And these people in, in, in Azerbaijan are no resources. They are members of the parliament, they are uh, professors in the universities, they are judges and the lawyers, they are all there. They are not refugees and seen as a kind of uh, somebody... Yeah, but, but what, what happens is the reason they want to keep the refugees often is because they, they integrate, they forget their, their, their original... That is like like with the Western Sahara or with with the yes. Palestinians and, and every country has its own exactly. dimension on it. But what I'm saying is that Azerbaijan has done a good job when it comes to their addressing mm -hmm. their their own problem. Azerbaijan is also a country that is located in uh, the junctions between north and south and east and west, mm -hmm. and we also have refugees from third countries here. Uh, um, at the beginning of um, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. we had a huge number of Chechens uh, mm -hmm. from the Russian Federation who came here and, mm -hmm. and, and seek refuge because of the conflict that was going on there. Right. They were welcomed and, and looked after. We have Iranians, we have Afghans, and we have other countries. These are people that we work closely with the government in trying to improve their situation mm -hmm. and their status and their access to, to services on it. Mm -hmm. And I think Azerbaijan is a country with so many good examples of how to address things that they can use this good experience, both on how they are accommodating the needs of the relatively small number mm -hmm. of refugees from other countries, mm -hmm. and at the same time take uh, care of the, the, the large population of internally displaced that are still there. We are here. We came here to assist these people when they had to flee their homes. Mm -hmm. We have been here for more than 20 years. Our hope is to be here, to be able to accompany these people to return to their homes mm -hmm. and re-establish their lives in, in dignity and in a peaceful environment. That is, uh, that is really right. And I think that this is a sensitive question, uh, question uh, because uh, so the Azerbaijani government mm. actually embraced these people, so mm. it, it, it gave them warmth, mm. everything, but still they need to return back to their homeland. Yes. Do you cooperate with the Azerbaijani government? And Absolutely. Yes. We work very closely with the State Committee uh, on Refugees and IDPs under the... Uh, the, the uh, <coughs> leadership of uh, Deputy Prime Minister Hasanov. We work very closely and we have an ongoing dialogue on, on this issue. Do, do, do you differentiate between IDP and then refugee? Yes, because they have two legal definitions according mm. to international uh, law. Okay. Uh, a refugee is somebody who has crossed an international border and cannot enjoy the protection of their government or a citizen. An IDP is in his own country mm -hmm. and it's the government who is the, the, right. the, 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 the mm -hmm. prime responsible and they're where we support. What do you do in a case like Syria where the government is, is seen as the other side? Exactly, that's the problem. We always come in situation where these lines become blurred mm -hmm. because uh, the situation is so complicated right. in, uh, internally. But we are not riding principles and sure. on, on this one. Our main aim is to, to drive the, the, um, sure. the assistant, to ensure, sure. to, um, to avoid that the people uh, are suffering unnecessarily. The other thing I would like to mention when it comes to the government of Azerbaijan's uh, engagement and all these things, and I'm, I'm very happy that also Azerbaijan has recognized that um, the demand for international 
solidarity and support and increased mm. effort mm. has been uh, duly uh, noted. And I'm very pleased that Azerbaijan this year um, decided to increase their contribution to UNHCR mm. so to enable us to uh, continue our work. So you, you'll be able to feed a few more mouths? A few more mouth, uh, mouths and we will continue effort. Uh, the issue is that there is no donor fatigue in terms of the willingness to, to help. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of uh, funding that we have received has increased every year for, for over the world. But the problem is that the needs have increased faster. Faster, yes. And that is the, 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 the challenge and the capacity. So everybody is facing the same, whether it's UNHCR or other agencies. But uh, we hope that um, by um, demonstrating and showing the needs, showing how we, um, we are assisting and showing the needs, we will continue to keep this momentum to be able to provide mm -hmm. this life-saving uh, in, 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 in your experience, have you seen a, a, a crisis, a refugee crisis, on the scale of what we have today in Europe? Uh, it depends on where you are and where you look at it. Yes, um, the situation in the 90s in the Balkans yes. was really yes. uh, terrible mm -hmm. in, in, um, in terms yeah. of uh, the situation. Sure. And uh, There has been a lot of uh, humanitarian crisis that has not been given mm -hmm. the same attention. You can say maybe that uh, the, the situation now, because it affects Europe is and the mm. Balkans, yeah. it gives more effect. But, you know, what has been going on in Central African Republic, yes, the Democratic yeah. Republic of Congo, mm. in uh, Rwanda. Uh, uh, Rwanda, Somalia, yeah. and all yeah. these things, are yeah. really uh, Sudan, Sudan uh, humanitarian tragedies uh, uh, that uh, unfortunately repeats themselves yeah. too often. Yeah. But we are there to help, and we are trying to do our best. And with the help of the public, mm -hmm. with the help of the governments and the rest of it, I think there is a possibility to, to uh, make a difference. Mm -hmm. And which IDP problems are topical now in Azerbaijan, which are challenging your organization? E, what we are working closely with the government um, on trying to improve the, the, the situation of the internally displaced. Mm -hmm. um, what we see, uh, many uh, IDPs are still uh, struggling with uh, substandard housing. The government has a very uh, uh, ambitious um, housing project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now almost half of the IDP population has been uh, able to, to benefit from, from, uh, from better housing. We also see that uh, IDPs sometimes um, are less, uh, are a bit disadvantaged when it comes to the labor market in, in getting jobs and all these things, and especially young people, mm -hmm. unemployment among IDP uh, youth and things. So we are having some projects where we do uh, kind of vocational training computer classes and uh, uh, computer literacy, mm. uh, which has shown good uh, mm. results. Uh, some apprenticeship uh, program where we learn young men on the job training as mm -hmm. car mechanics or hairdressers or whatever, so that they can set up the, their, their business and go on. We also have a project where we provide free legal advice mm -hmm. where we have lawyers um, that um, IDPs can um, consult. Seek consult when they have a problem. Some of these people had to flee, they lost the documents, they died there, mm -hmm. and they have sometimes problems in addressing these things. So we are trying to complement the government's efforts from, from different angles. And Doug, what hmm? is your feeling? Uh, can this um, situation, when Europe is involved, in deep involved in this uh, refugee problem, mm -hmm. uh, promote uh, resolution of conflicts throughout the world, or it will not attract attention? It's a very difficult question, because it depends on how much attention mm -hmm. the uh, 
the audiences are able to absorb and, and to solve in, in one thing. I think um, the attention on, on um, the need for conflict resolution and finding peaceful means to mm. continue is uh, a positive thing. And I think that that momentum can have a, a positive effect on, on uh, other situations. Mm. But um, with so many things going on at the same time, of course, there will be a kind of a hierarchy in terms of, of uh, the competition of attention. Mm -hmm. For example, now in Europe we have the Ukraine, yes. in, in it we have the... Uh, and we have... Uh, so there is uh, always um, a competition on it. But I think as long as we talk about the problems and bring the problems on the table, there is always place and space mm -hmm. for the ones that we sometimes tend to forget and to use this momentum to be able to elevate them a little bit. Thank you very much for your time. We, we know you're very busy with, with everything that's going on and we appreciate you coming here to tell us a little bit in more details of a very interesting, very depressing subject. With that, I will leave you with hopes of a better tomorrow. Goodbye.